Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Care2F4 here bringing you another Minecraft World War II BAFTA build tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the IJN Issei, Issei class battleship. The Issei class battleships were a pair of dreadnought battleships built for the Imperial Japanese Navy during World War I. Both ships carried supplies for the survivors of the Great Kanto Earthquake in 1923. They were modernized in 1934 through 1937 with improvements to their armor and machinery in a rebuilt superstructure in the pagoda mass style. Afterwards, they played a minor role in the Second Sino-Japanese War. Despite the expensive reconstructions, both vessels were considered obsolete by the eve of the Pacific War, and neither saw significant action in the early years of the war. Following the loss of most of the IGN's large aircraft carriers during the Battle of Midway in mid-1942, they were rebuilt with a flight deck, replacing the rear pair of gun turrets to give them the ability to operate an air group of flow planes. A lack of aircraft and qualified pilots, however, meant that they never actually operated their aircraft in combat. While awaiting their air group, the sister ships were occasionally used to ferry troops and material to Japanese bases. They participated in the Battle of Cape Anglo in late 1944, where they decoyed the American carrier fleet supporting the invasion of Lette, away from the landing beaches. Afterwards, both ships were transferred to Southeast Asia. In early 1945, they participated in Operation Kita, where they transported petrol and other strategic materials to Japan. The sisters were reduced to reserve until they were sunk during American airstrikes in July. After the war, they were scrapped in 1946 through 1947. So the Issei class here are a very interesting um, class of ships, mainly because they're probably the only class I would say of Japanese ships to actually survive the war. All ships of the class survived and were later on scrapped. Um, but really interesting that both ships did survive and also the fact that they were converted into basically half aircraft carriers. Again, a very interesting design and kind of uh, kind of weird, <laughs> kind of weird to say the very least. But um, I guess they uh, was a uh, you know option for the Japanese in trying to keep up their air power um, in the Pacific. Obviously, as I mentioned, they never actually got to really use their uh, float planes in combat, so it's more of kind of a um, you know idea rather than actually being put into action. Overall, really cool looking ship and a long time since we've done a battleship, so nice to have another battleship here. The version we have in front of us here is the 1940, or the rebuilt, modernized version of the Issei. Um, so this isn't based off the World War I one, so that's why we are calling this the World War II Issei. Maybe in the future we will come back and revisit the World War I version, but uh, for the time being, this here is the 1940 version. This also uh, does not have the flight deck, so later in the future we will do a version that does have the flight deck. I do have it designed, just it will not be covered in this tutorial doing the flight deck version. Um, but with that, before we go and jump in and take a look at the build, I do want to go and give special thanks to Patreon support Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description where you can go and post a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so earn a viewing query request of your choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. It's really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link is down in the video description. With that though, let's dive in here and take a look at the IJN Issei. So again, start with here, we have the front bow here of the ship. Uh, nothing too fancy here with it, just pretty standard. We then have our uh, two forward turrets, so located um, right here, so turrets A and B. We then have a bunch of our casemate guns, so very uh, traditional uh, design here for um, those kind of uh, World War One dreadnoughts where having these casemate guns, and we have these located around this section here. It's got a pretty good armament of uh, um, basically those uh, secondary casemate guns. We then have our uh, pagoda style tower, so this is what was rebuilt with the modernization. Uh, basically made this a lot more um, of the pagoda style with a lot more uh, structure built into it rather than just having kind of um, open beams and stuff like that. We have some of our anti-aircraft batteries on the ship. Um, from what it looks like, there weren't a whole lot of anti-aircraft weaponry added to the ship even after its modernization. So we have a few kind of heavier anti-aircraft batteries, and you'll see on the turrets, they tried to mount on some uh, anti-aircraft guns on there, some smaller caliber ones. So it does have a little bit of anti-aircraft protection, but definitely not as much as a lot of the uh, later war um, ships did. We have the kind of mid-deck section here, which has um, all of the kind of um, all the uh, lifeboats, crane, all that stuff, and then we have our one funnel here. We have the uh, rigging here that goes from the pagoda to the rear mass. Uh, the rear mass of the ship, we have the kind of two mid turrets or two, two mid-deck turrets. So again, that kind of 
uh, Japanese design there. They really like to have mid turrets, especially on their um, kind of uh, early, I, mean, I guess World War One, early World War Two bat or, uh, battleships. They like to have those mid turrets. We have our rear mast again, as I mentioned, and then we have our two rear turrets right here, our seaplane launcher, as well as our uh, crane there for recovering that uh, float plane. And uh, that really is the ship. It's a really nice detailed model. I think it came out really good. Probably one of my better bath or better, better battleships, I should say, um, in recent time. And it's definitely been a little while since we've done one. I think the last one we did was actually Iowa. So it's definitely been a while. Happy to come back and revisit the uh, battleships in BAFTA builds because I think they're always the best looking ships. Um, but yeah, really nice ship. Came out really good. And just for, uh, you know, giggles, we'll take a look at the flight deck version. So this is the flight deck converted version as well. So it will be a separate tutorial altogether for covering how to do that one as well. So if you're interested in that, uh, definitely stay tuned and we'll be... Uh, covering that sometime in the future of the um, of the tutorials. But anyways, though, that is going to wrap up this overview for the Issei. Let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning of our first layer. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into our first layer here, we'll be going ahead and starting with layer one. A quick few things I want to mention is if you're completely new to my path to build tutorials, the way I like to structure these tutorials is for about the first three layers here for this build, we will be doing half on camera, half off. What this means is we're going to be building the entire center line of the ship and then the right side, and it'll be up to you guys to take the right side and copy it over to the left side. It's uh, pretty straightforward, and once we kind of get through the first layer or two, it'll make a little bit more sense. But once we get into the more tricky parts where the superstructure starts to come into play, we will be going ahead and reverting back to basically um, doing everything all together to make things a little bit easier to go ahead and get put, put together. Uh, but anyways, we will be starting with layer one here, and we will be building the center line in half this layer. In addition, if you do want to have the ship built in the water, you do need to make sure you build this a certain height. To build this a certain height, you want to make sure that you have basically your layer one here, one block underneath the water surface. You can see here we have the blue row of concrete here representing our water level, and you can see here where layer two is sitting. Very important to make sure that's correct because that will basically dictate how your ship is positioned in the water, and you want it to be at this height so that it does sit properly and you don't have red poking up or you don't have the ship almost completely underwater. So um, with that all squared away, we can go ahead and get started here. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place down a brick top slab. After that brick top slab, um, we're going to place down a piston. Now if you are not on Java, I would recommend instead of this piston, I would place down a um, brick upside down stair. So um, again, I'll just kind of grab a stair here to show you for example, but I would place down a stair upside down like that instead of the piston, again if you are not on Java. After that though, we're going to go then go to both sides of this uh, piston or the stair, and we're going to place it on in case you would sign. After that, we're going to go back from this piston, a row of red concrete, and this is going to be a row of total of 35 blocks. So again, from that piston, all the way back here to this last block is going to be 35 blocks. Then we have our brick top slab, our acacia wood trap door, and then we're going to place down two acacia wood fence gates, which are going to be opened up toward each other. So they're going to look like this, and we're going to open them up toward each other, like so. Now on the sides of those fence gates, we're going to place down acacia wood signs on both sides like so. We're going to go then place down a birchwood slab going forward, followed by an end rod, and then we want to place down a brick upside down stair, followed by a second brick upside down stair after that. We're going to go forward for red concrete, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, red concrete blocks forward, a brick wall, and then one and two red stained glass panes going forward like that. After that's done, we're going to then go to the side here with the third red concrete block from the front. So one, two, three. We're going to place down a red stained glass pane on the side. One more back, brick wall, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Uh, or my bad, actually, it's going to be um, nineteen red concrete blocks back. Let me just double check my count here. And yep, from that brick wall back, it's going to be nineteen blocks. We're going to go then place down a brick up down stair, followed by a brick up down stair again, and then a brick top slab. One thing I do want to mention is that in the water you may have difficulty placing down the end rods. I don't think that they are able to be placed in water, so if that's the case you can use chains as a good substitute instead of um, the end rods. Obviously the end rods here are going to be your best bet, but um, again chains will work also in this um, section here for the shafts there for the propellers. Anyways, though, after those two brick or that brick top side there, we're going to place down two end rods back, or two chains, and then we're going to place down a birchwood slab after that. Once we have that done, going back up to the front here, we're going to place down a uh, red stained glass pane that's going to be coming off the side of this uh, third concrete block back. We're going to go and then go one and two red stained glass panes back. We then want to grab our brick walls, and we're going to place down one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten brick walls back, and then one, two, three red stained glass panes after those brick walls. We're going to go ahead and go to the side of each one of these brick walls, and we're going to go ahead and place down a acacia wood sign. So it's going to get, again be on each one of these walls. So all the way along the side here, like so. And once we have that all done right there, that is going to basically wrap up what we have there for layer one. With that all done, uh, again, that's it for layer one. Here's what it should look like from the top down view with the layer complete. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, which will be layer number two. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we go ahead and moving into layer number two. For layer two, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and place down a red concrete block on top of this brick top slab here. And we're going to go then go back from this red concrete block with a long row that's going to go all the way back to the end here. A total of 41, and it's going to stick one past this last acacia wood fence gate. So, just like that, followed by a brick wall and then a red stained glass pane. And that right there is going to basically be our center line of the ship, and we're going to go and start working our way out to the sides now. We're going to go then place down two red stained glass panes come off the sides there of the uh, fourth and fifth blocks from the front, then a brick wall, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, to one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, red concrete blocks back, two brick walls, and two red stained glass panes back, like so. Going back up to the front and out to the sides here, we're going to go to our uh, second block. We're going to place down a red stained glass pane at the side, followed by a second pane back, then another brick wall, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23, red concrete blocks back. A brick ball wall and then two red stained glass panes after that. Going again back up to the front here, we're going to go to the side. We're going to go one, two, and our third glass or red concrete block back. We're going to place a glass pane at the side, then one and two blocks back, so you have a total of three. We then want to place down two brick walls and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight red concrete blocks, two brick walls again, and then three red stained glass panes after that. After you have that all done right there, that's going to pretty much wrap up what we have there for layer 2. Again, you'll take the same thing on the right side, copy it over to the left side. At this point in time though, your water level should be uh, sitting pretty much uh, right here with this level. So we should have our water sitting at this point right here. And you should have the tops of these blocks basically sticking just a tiny bit above the water. Should basically be at that level, but the water kind of sits a little bit below a full block. So that all red should be visible on the top there. And nothing should be underwater, and that right there should be uh, basically good to go. So with that all done, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer two. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to layer number three. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to start off with, we're going to place down a stone block on top of this red concrete block here. We're going to go then go back from the stone block with a row of stone. That's going to be a total of 19 blocks in length. So again, from that front one there, back here to this, that's going to be 19 blocks of stone. We're going to go and then switch to stripped oak wood. And we're going to place down a row stripped oak wood back. This row right here is going to go back a total of 21 after those um, stone full blocks. I would recommend trying to make sure you keep all your stripped oak wood planks facing the same direction as uh, it will look a little bit better um, looking down at it from the top here instead of having a bunch of random facing, you know, direction ones or whatever, um, which will kind of make things look a little funky, a little weird, as you can see. So again, I would recommend having it all face one direction. You can have it go back to... Um, you know, front to back or side to side, either one will work. But as you can see, we have that uniform, uniformity going all the way along here for our deck. We're gonna go then place our two stone blocks here, and then our inside wall, which should end on top of this red stained glass pane. With that done, going back up to the front, we're gonna place down a like gray stained glass pane came off the side here of the third block, followed by a second glass pane back, a andesite wall, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen stone blocks back. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Stripped oak wood planks back. Then 1, 2, 3, stone blocks, and a site wall, and then 1 and 2, like gray stained glass paints back after that. Going back up to the front here, we're going to go, and go off of the second stone block. We're going to place a light gray stained glass paint. One more back, and a site wall, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Stone blocks back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 uh, of these stripped oak wood blocks back. And then 1, 2, 3 stone blocks, 2 andesite walls, 2 light gray stained glass panes. And lastly, for our last row out to the side here, we're going to place down a light gray stained glass pane coming off this third stone block from the front here. 
Then we're going to go back 1 and 2, then 2 in the set walls, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, then 2 in the set walls, and 1, 2, 3, like racing West Pains like that to go ahead and complete that um, side there. With that all done though, that is going to wrap up that, and the last thing we have to do here is we're going to go to the back, this last stone block here, we're going to place down an item frame, and then a crossbow in the item frame rotate downwards to represent the rear anchors that are located on the stern here of the ship. With that all done though, that is going to wrap up everything we have there for uh, layer number three. Again, here is an overview of what it should look like from a top-down view. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, which will be layer number four. Before we go ahead and move into layer four, there is one thing I want to cover for Java players, and that is going to be the uh, piston that we have down here. We will be going ahead and grabbing ourselves a debug stick, and to grab a debug stick here, we'll use the command slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. By pressing enter, you'll get this glowing stick here. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and go up to this piston. We're going to left click it until we get selected extended false pop up. We'll then right click it and it gets rid of that wood portion. It just kind of helps with the front sloping there for the bow of the ship. Nothing really major, but just a nice little touch there on the front. Anyways though, with that all complete, we'll now move on to layer 4. Now for layer 4 to begin with, we're going to be going ahead and doing this layer all together. So both sides will be done at the same time. We're going to start off with a stone block on top of this stone block here. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone upside down stair going forward. We're going to place down an item frame on the front of the stair, and then a block of gold in the item frame rotated sideways to represent that Japanese emperor's crest that they put on capital ships. We're also going to go ahead and then place down a uh, birchwood sign to both sides of that stair. And if you're on Java, we can also place down a birchwood sign here, coming off this um, side, the front of the stair there, to go ahead and kind of create that nicer design there on the front. We then want to go ahead and go to the stone block right behind this. We're going to place down a light gray stained glass pane out to the sides here. So like so, and coming off that glass pane, we're going to place down an item frame, and then in that item frame, we're going to place down a crossbow, and we're going to rotate this facing downwards, like so, for our front anchors. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a second stone block down the center, a light gray stainless pane again to both sides, and then we're going to go ahead and place down a stone upside down stair, and then a second stair going back from the glass panes. So again, like that on both sides, and then we're going to place down one and two stripped oak wood blocks there in the center. After we have that done, we're going to take our stone blocks, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. So you have four rows, actually my bad, it's going to be uh, rows of four on the outsides there, and on the inside here we do want to place down our stripped oak wood. So you're going to basically have a row four of stone blocks on the outside here, row four of the stripped birch wood, or sorry, the stripped oak wood in the center, and then on the other side there. Then on these four blocks, we're going to place down four polished black stone buttons on the sides here. We're going to go and then place down another stone block to both sides, and then another stripped oak wood uh, block like that. And again, same thing one more time, like this going back. After that, we're going to go then grab a stone brick wall, and we want to go ahead and place down a stone brick wall, come off this stone block here, and then an end rod going forward from it like that for our first set of casemates. After that, we're going to go then place down a stone block to both sides. We'll fill in the middle space here with stripped oak wood. And we're going to go then place down a, another row of three of stripped oak wood down the center here, a stone brick wall to both sides, and then we're going to then place down an end rod coming off to the side there of the stone brick walls there for our another casemate set. Next section here, we're going to again place down a row of three of stripped oak wood down the center, a stone block to both ends. Our next row here is going to be a, uh, another row of three of stripped oak wood down the center, then a stone block. To both ends and coming off that stone block we're going to place down a stone brick wall which is going to be followed with an end rod point out to the side same thing over here like so with that done uh, we then want to place down a uh, another row of three of stripped oak wood then a stone block to both ends and then a light gray stained glass pane coming off that stone block next row here is going to be a, another row of stripped birch wood another row of three down the center stone block to both sides stone brick wall and then an end rod coming off that stone brick wall to the side so same thing there on both sides. Our next section here is going to be a, another row of three of stripped birchwood. Then a stone block, again to both sides, and then we're going to place down a stone upside down stair. To both sides. After that, we're going to place down a, uh, another stone block like this to both sides there, a row of three of stripped oak wood down the center. And then a stone brick wall on both sides, another end rod. After that, we're going to go ahead and then place down a... Uh, row of three of stripped oak wood again down the center here. Stone block to both sides here. And then we're going to place down a stone stair like that to both sides. 
Then, uh, again, a another row of three of stripped oak wood. Stone blocks to both sides. Then a stone brick wall to the sides there. And then we're going to go ahead and place down the end rod, this time facing toward the rear. Like so. We're going to go ahead and place down another stone block. Going back like that. And then we're going to place our row of three of stripped oak wood. After that, we're going to place down a stone brick wall to both sides here. End rods come, going back from those walls. We then want to place down a stone block here to both sides, and then a stripped oak wood block there in the exact center. And then once we get to this point, a stone block in the center. Then we're going to place down an andesite wall, which will be to both sides. So andesite wall like that to both sides. And then we're going to place down another andesite wall here in the center. And then a light gray stain with paint to both sides, uh, or both corners there like that for basically our uh, barbette there for our turret number three there. After that is all done, uh, we want to go ahead and kind of start to set up our uh, other turret here. This is going to be set up using a stone upside down stair like so, and then an inside wall to both sides of that stair like that. We then, um, kind of depending on what version you're on, if you're on Java, we're going to go ahead and use a piston on both sides here. If you're not on Java, um, instead of using the pistons, I would recommend using some stone full blocks um, or stone stairs would also work. And then we're going to place down a stone full block there in the center. So to kind of show what I'm talking about here, you can use a stone stair instead, which might work pretty good, or a stone full block. But uh, pistons here again, gonna kind of be our best bet here for our Java players. Then come off this, uh, you can either place down a stone stair like so, or you can place down a piston like that again, depending on your version. And we're gonna go ahead and then place down a, a skeleton skull to both sides of this piston like so. And after that, we're gonna go ahead and grab our birchwood fence gates. We're gonna place down one and two fence gates, which we're gonna open up toward the rear of the ship like so. Now at this point, uh, we're gonna go ahead and then grab ourselves a white bed. We're going to place it on a white bed here on top of these two uh, blocks. So just like that. And we also want to go ahead and grab some stone buttons here. And we're going to place down a stone button on top of these two strip, uh, stripped uh, oak wood blocks like that. After we have that done, we're going back from the skeleton skulls. We're going to place down two polished darate slabs like this on both sides. Again, for these lifeboats located kind of this midsection here. Then out to the side here, we're going to place down one and two stone buttons. Same thing over here, one and two. We'll also go ahead and grab ourselves some oak wood plank uh, oak wood pressure plates and we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, and 7 along the side here of the ship and same thing over here just like that for kind of keeping a little bit more of our deck uh, color apparent after that we're going to go then take our stone blocks we're going to place down a row of one, two, three across this section here then a second row of 3 then one stone block in the center a like racing less pain to both sides a another stone block in the center this is going to be followed up with an andesite wall on both sides. Then we're going to place down one andesite wall going back. And then again, a light gray was painted to both sides there like so. We then want to place down um, our next turret. This is going to be a stone upside down stair like so. And then a andesite wall to both sides. So same thing we did for the that turret there. Again, a stone block in the center. And depending on your version of what you did for this turret here, we're going to go ahead and place down our pistons or our stairs or full blocks. And then going forward here, either your stair or your piston. And then we're going to place down our skeleton schools on both sides here of those pistons, like so. We'll then grab our birchwood fence gates. And we're going to place down two fence gates going back, so one, two. And we're going to have these fence gates opened up toward the rear, like that, of the ship. Um, going to the sides here, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some oak wood pressure plates. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, five after those stone buttons. And one, two, three, four, five on the sides there. Once we get to this section here, it's a little bit uh, different on our two sides, so make sure you pay close attention to what we're doing on each side. Now for our catapult here, we're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull that's going to go on top of this glass pane here. And we're going to go ahead and place down uh, one end rod back, and then we're going to place down two end rods going forward. On the other side here, we're going to go to this glass pane. We're going to place down an end rod that goes up, followed by a second end rod. Then come off the second end rod, we're going to place down one up like this. Then we're going to go ahead and go up and forward at an angle, and we're going to place down another end rod like that for our crane. And just dropping down from the end rod, we're going to place down just a chain to kind of make it look a little bit more like a crane. And that'll be over there on the left side of the rear of the ship. We're going to go then place down a stone, or rather, sorry, an end rod on top of this andesite wall here. And then we're going to go then place down an iron bar on top of that for the rear little uh, kind of mast there. Once we have that done, we're going to take our acacia wood pressure plates. We're going to place down one, two, and three down the center here. We then want to go ahead and go to the left side of the ship, so this side here, we're going to place down three going forward there, and we're going to go ahead and then place down one over here on this side. Underneath this end rod, if you're on Java, we can go ahead and kind of have that orange color a little bit more apparent, 
by placing down an item frame underneath it. And if you do want to go ahead and expand upon that a little bit more, we can also place down an orange stained glass pane in that item frame. Again, that'll be for Java only players and um, all that. So that right there is basically what you want on the stern there of your ship. Now, with that all complete, this is what it should look like from the top-down view, looking at it like so. And for us Java players, we'll go ahead and take our debug stick, and we'll go ahead and go to our pistons here, and we'll right-click them with the extended true selected, and we'll just go ahead and get rid of that top portion there, and it really just kind of helps with the sloping there of our turrets. So we have that turret there, and that turret there set up so far. Anyways, with that all out of the way, that's probably going to be our longest layer, as we do have a lot going on with that layer. But again, looking at it from above here, this we should have for the top-down view of that layer complete. With that though, that is going to wrap up layer number 4, and with that, let's go ahead and move into layer number 5. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number 5. For layer 5 to begin, we're going to place down an end rod on top of this stone upside down stair here, followed by an end rod on top of that. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a um, redstone repeater. We're going to separate the notches apart from each other like so. We'll then grab ourselves some redstone dust and we're going to place down one and two redstone dust pieces back and then another redstone repeater with the notches spread apart like that directly after that. Once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and then grab ourselves our uh, birchwood fence gates. We're going to place down a fence gate here, one here, and we're going to open these toward the front there of the ship. After this, we're going to go ahead and place down a piston or an upset or a stone stair like so. Whatever you did for the rear turrets, you're going to do the same thing up here. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone block back, stone upside down stair. To the sides here, we'll grab our skeleton skulls. We're going to place down a skeleton skull again to the sides here. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down our pistons and then our and side walls. So like that going back. Once we have that all done there, we want to go ahead and then take our um, light gray stainless, or rather, sorry, our inside walls. We're going to place down an inside wall here, block, inside wall in the center. Light gray stainless paint on both sides there. Stone block in the center. Again, an inside wall going back on both sides here. And then a row of three of stone full blocks across like so. And after we have that done, actually instead of that row of three there, we're going to place down one stripped oak wood block there in the center. We're going to go then go with one stone block back on both sides there, and there's stripped oak wood block there in the uh, dead center there of the ship. We then want to go ahead and place down um, again a row of stripped oak wood. It's going to be one, two, three, four, and five blocks. Um, five, and we'll just actually go back six. So we're going to go six of these stripped oak wood blocks back from this, so you have a total of eight here. To the sides, uh, we're going to take our stone blocks and we want to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, uh, and five blocks back. And then we're going to go ahead and place down our inside wall. So, like this. Same thing over here one, two, three, four, five, and then inside wall. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone block in the center and inside wall to both sides from that. And then we're just going to take our cobwebs and we're just going to place down a row of three across, like so. Now, to the sides here of the superstructure, we're going to go ahead and grab our light gray stainless panes. We're going to place down one and two, coming off the second and third block here. Same thing over here on this side. Uh, we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves some end rods. We're going to go ahead and place down an end rod here, then one back from it. Same thing over here, one here, and one back from it. Uh, we also want some iron trap doors, and we're going to place down an iron trap door here to both sides. And then after that iron trap door, we're going to place down an andesite wall to both sides like so. Uh, once that is all complete there, we're going to go and grab polished diorite and we're going to place down a row two of polished diorite top slabs to both sides. We'll also go ahead and grab ourselves a stone brick slab as well as a skeleton skull. We're going to place down a stone brick slab that's going to be on top of this upside down stair here. Skeleton skull facing forward and then a birchwood fence gate come off the slab opened up to the side. Same thing here. So like that on both sides. Then going back from this, we're going to go and grab a white bed, and we're going to place down a white bed here on top of this wall, and same thing over here. With that all uh, done there, we're going to go and then follow this up with an inside wall. That will be coming off of that wall there, and we're actually going to replace this wall here with a stone full block. So we're just going to go and substitute that out again for that stone full block there. After we have that done, we want to go and then place down a lever that's going to go on top of this stone block here to both sides for an anti-aircraft gun position and if you are on Java we can go ahead and kind of detail this a little bit by placing down an item frame on the stone block like so and it kind of creates a little bit of like a fighting position um, and then again that's going to be for Java players only. After that though we're going to go ahead and place down an oak wood pressure plate to both sides like so and we have our next turret we're going to build. Again still an upside down stair here and then we're going to follow this up with an inside wall to both sides 
We're going to go and then place down our stone block in the center. Our pistons, so one here, one here, here. Again, you can use whatever you use for these um, other turrets. And then our stone, uh, or our skeleton skulls, and then our birchwood fence gates. Again, opened up like that toward the back there. Now, uh, once that's all done, we're going to leave the pistons alone for right now. We're just going to kind of leave it as is. Um, and we're going to come back to that a little bit later. Um, anyways, though, after that is all done there, we're going to go and then skip back to our kind of rear mass here. There's going to be a row of, or just one stone block there in the center. We're going to go and then place down a trip bar hook on the sides there. And then after that, we're going to go and then place down a inside wall to both sides of that stone block. We're going to place down another stone block here going back down the center. And we want to go and then grab an end rod and we're going to place down an end rod here to both sides. After that's all done, we want to go ahead and then build our next turret. So again, kind of the same thing we've been doing here. Stone upstairs on stair, stone full block, and then our um, piston here. Piston to the side there, and then our anti-side walls going toward the back there. And we're going to go then take our birchwood fence gates. We're going to place down one, two, going back, and again, we'll open this these toward the rear as well like that for our main guns. Lastly, we'll take our skeleton schools and we're just going to place them down on the sides here of these two pistons like that. At this point in time though, for Java players, we are going to be going ahead and adding one thing onto these two uh, rear turrets that we just built on. For this, we're going to need a trip bar hook or debug stick here and just some random block that you can delete later. What we're going to do here is we're going to skip a space off the side here of these andesite walls and then we're going to do this for both turrets here. So we're going to leave a space of one between those walls and this block. We're going to go ahead and place down a trip bar hook here on the sides of these blocks. So like so. And what we're going to go ahead and do next is we're going to go ahead and then take our debug stick. And we want to go ahead and left click the trip bar hook until we get selected facing. We're going to go ahead and then right click it until it rotates and it connects up to our wall. And this is just kind of for the range finders that are on the sides of the turret. At least I'm assuming the range finders or some kind of, um, some kind of um, observation little things that stick out the side of the turret. And that right there is just going to be done on both sides there for those turrets there. And it's going to be only for those two turrets. Um, and the front one here is not going to have those just yet. But the one on top of it will. Um, so we're going to go ahead and leave those as is for right now. As we will be adding some stuff onto the top of the pistons and the top of these blocks here in the next layer. So we're just going to again leave those alone for right now. And uh, with that we'll be going ahead and moving in uh, real quick before we do. Um, one thing also is some pressure plates. We're going to place down one, two, and three oakwood pressure plates here. Same thing on this side, and also one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, up there on the bow of the ship. With that done, though, that is going to wrap up everything for layer five. I'll give you an overview of what it looks like. So again, this is what it looks like from the top-down view. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, layer number six. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number six. For layer six to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to take our birchwood fence gates. We're going to place down one, two, on top of this uh, forward turret, and we're going to go ahead and place down our uh, fence gates going forward. We're going to go then place down a piston on top of this um, wall here, or your stair, whichever you chose. Then a stone block, our stone upside down stair. Then we're going to place down our skeleton skulls here to the sides of the um, piston. And then we want to go and then place down our piston here to the sides, and then our andesite wall to both sides like so. For this forward turret, we'll also take our debug stick for Java players, and we will go ahead and right click those pistons to go ahead and get rid of that wood portion on top there. With that done, we're gonna leave this piston. We're gonna leave these pistons alone. We're gonna leave this alone for right now. Um, we can actually do our um, item frames there, or actually, sorry, rather our trip bar hooks to the sides. So just like we did for the rear turrets, we're gonna go and do the same thing here for this top turret here. So it's gonna look like that. After that, we're gonna go then place down an andesite wall here in the center, and then we want to go and then place down a uh, oakwood pressure plate to both sides. We're gonna place down an airstone block going down the center, like Ray Stain was pain to both sides of that block. And then we want to place down a row of three of stone blocks, and then a second row of three after that. To the sides here, we're going to place down a stone brick slab. That's going to go on top of this, um, like gray stainless paint. A uh, birchwood fence gate coming off it, opened up toward the slab, and then a skeleton skull like so. And same thing we hear for these anti-aircraft guns, like that. After that's done, we're going to then take our oakwood pressure plates. We're going to place down one, two, one, two, all on the sides there. In this uh, middle space here, we're going to go ahead and place down a row 1, 2 of polished diorite, 1, 2. In the center, between the last two, we're going to go ahead and place down a redstone repeater. Like so, with the notches spread apart, like that. We then want to take our cobwebs, we're going to place down a row of 3 across. Um, then we want to go ahead and place down, actually, 
rather than a row of three, it's going to be a one on both sides there, and then an anti wall there in the center. We're going to go and then place down a stone block, one more block out to the sides, and we then just want to place down a row of three of cobwebs across this section here. Now when we get to this section for the turrets, we're going to go ahead and kind of put a little bit of the top detailing on top of these. And uh, for these, what we want to do here is we want to go ahead and grab ourselves uh, materials you can see I have here. We're going to place down a iron trap door on this upside down stair. We're going to go ahead and place down a redstone repeater, separate the notches like so, and then we're going to place down a lever on top of these two uh, pistons. If you're on Java, we'll also go ahead and place down an item frame like that underneath them. And we'll also take our debug st stick now at this time, and we're going to go ahead and right click the pistons to get rid of that wood portion. So you get these kind of cool looking anti-aircraft gun positions on top of that turret there. And we're going to go ahead and also do the same thing back here. So again, we have our iron trap door here, redstone repeater, separate the notches, our levers, our item frames, and then again, we'll use our debug stick there to get rid of that wood. So it looks just like that there and really nice design there for those turrets. After that's all complete though, we're going to go ahead and then build a stone block on top of this one here. And then we're going to go ahead and then build a stone upside down stair coming off the side of that block. So, like this, to both sides, and then we're going to place down the skeleton skull, come off the side there of this uh, stone block. So it's going to go off the side of the stone block, facing forward there. We're going to place down another stone block back, and there's skeleton skull on both sides of the stone block, and that right there is going to basically wrap up what we have for for that. And anyways, that is going to complete everything for this layer, just trying to make sure I'm not missing anything. I do notice one thing right here, we are going to place down a redstone repeater. Um, on top of these diorite top slabs on both sides like that. But uh, other than that, that's going to pretty much wrap up everything for this layer here. Um, layer number six. And again, here's an overview of what it looks like. And uh, with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, layer number seven. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number seven. For layer seven to go ahead and get started with here, we want to go and go to the top of this forward turret. We're going to go ahead and basically do the same thing we did for the uh, rear section or the rear turrets. This is going to be a iron trap door here, redstone repeater with the notches spread apart, our levers, and then again for Java players our item frames, and then we'll use our debug stick here to go ahead and get rid of that wood. So it looks just like that. With that done though, we're going to go ahead and then place down a piston that's going to be right here on top of this wall. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone block back from it, followed by a second and third stone block. We then want to go ahead and place down a stone brick slab on top of the stone block here to both sides. We're going to go ahead and place down a birchwood fence gate coming off that uh, stone brick slab as well as a skeleton school like that for this anti-aircraft gun position. We're going to place down a stone block after that slab there to both sides, followed by a light gray stainless pane out to the sides here. Coming off that pane, we're going to go ahead and place down a birchwood sign. Just like this on the back section here. We're also going to go ahead and grab ourselves an item frame and a light gray bed. We're going to place an item frame here on both sides. Light gray bed in the item frames like so. And again, if you're on Java, we'll place a birchwood sign on the side of that stone block as well. So like so. And we then want to place down a stone brick wall coming off the back there like so. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and then place down an inside wall on top of this one here. Then another stone block that goes up like that. Once we have that all done there, we're going to go ahead and then also place down an inside wall going to, uh, toward the back there as well. To the sides, we're going to go ahead and grab a piston. We're going to place down a piston here on both sides like so. We're going to place down an item frame off the side of the piston. Light gray banner or light gray bed in the item frame like so. And we then want to go ahead and place down a birchwood sign on the side of it if you're on Java. And we also want to go ahead and place down a or take our debug stick here and just get rid of that wood portion. Now one thing to mention here is that um, instead of using the piston you can use a stone brick slab instead for an alternative. But again um your best bet there is going to be the piston, whoops, but best. Uh, we're going to go ahead and place down our levers here on the sides. Now this is going to be for Java players. We're going to place down our levers on the side of this block here. We're going to go ahead and then uh, left click the lever and we're going to go ahead and set face to floor. So we're just going to left click it until we have a prompt face to floor using our debug stick and we're going to go ahead and then right click them and set the floor. We're going to go ahead and then rotate them so that they face out to the sides here. And we're going to go ahead and just do this around for each one of our levers so that they face out to the sides like so and then we can go and then right click our debug sticks or right click our pistons like that to go ahead and get rid of that unfortunately there isn't really a good alternative from the uh using those um uh levers there you can just place down some skeleton skulls or something in that place instead but um again that 
detail is really going to be more of a Java um, type of thing. Anyways, though, after that, we're going to go ahead and place down our birchwood fence. Can you come out this fence or this uh, wall here? Open up like so. And then we're going to place down a skeleton school on both sides of that fence gate like that. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down a um, inside wall that's going to go on top of this stone block here. This is going to be followed up with a lever on both sides. I'm going to have these face toward the outside here. So again, um, like so. And for Java players, we'll again use our item frame trick here to go ahead and kind of make this look a little bit more like a fighting position. And we're just going to place down our item frames there underneath. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a piston here. This can also be replaced with a um, stone brick slab as well. We're going to go ahead and then um, place down an item frame coming off the side of the piston facing toward the rear. Like gray bed in the item frame, or rather actually, sorry, a skeleton skull. Coming off the side there, and then to the sides of the piston, we're also going to place down a trip bar hook to both sides. And then we're going to right click the top of the piston there to go ahead and get rid of that um, that wood portion. So it should look like that there for this uh, range finder or something down the back there of the, um, the second mass. Anyways, though, with that all complete, that's going to pretty much wrap up this layer. I'm just trying to make sure I'm not missing anything, and everything does appear to be good to go. With that all done, that's going to wrap up layer 7. Again, here is an aerial overview of what it looks like with this layer complete. And at this point in time, we're probably going to be moving into our final layers here and just kind of settling down and focusing on finishing off the pagodas and all that stuff. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and move on to our last final layers. All right, guys, so moving into our final layers here, we have layers 8 through 13. For these layers to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and begin with by going ahead and going to this section here. Now, we have this piston here. Instead of the piston, you can also use a stone brick upside down stair as an alternative to this piston. Um, because on top of this, we're going to go ahead and place down a lever, like so. And we also want to go ahead and grab our item frame. And we're going to place down our item frame here, again, for our Java players. Now, once we have that done, we can go ahead and then take our debug stick here. And we can just go ahead and right-click the piston. So it looks like that there. So, again, that's the Java version. And you may have to be creative there for, um, you know, Bedrock or you know, any of the other versions. After that, though, we're going to go ahead and place down a smoker right behind it. And we're going to go ahead and place down two stone blocks. To the sides of the stone block here, we're going to place down a skeleton skull. And we then want to place down a stone um, upside down stair, which is going to sit right after the skeleton skull. Coming off the stone upside down stair, we're also going to place down a skeleton skull to the side there. We also want to go ahead and place down an iron trap door to both sides of the smoker. And then on top of that um, iron trap door, we are going to go ahead and place down a lever. To both sides like so and again we'll place down our item frame there for java players we then want to place down a andesite wall on top of the smoker and then behind that we're going to go ahead and place down a stone top slab so i'm going to go ahead and grab a slab thought i had one somewhere around here so we'll just go ahead and go to our creative menu and we're going to place down a stone top slab here after that we want to go ahead and then place down a stone uh upside down stair in the center and then a stone top slab to both sides of that stair we're going to place down an item frame on the sides there of those stone top slabs. And we're going to go then place down a snowball in the item frame there for some spotlights. We also want to go and grab a birchwood fence post. And we're going to place down a fence post here on top of those skeleton skulls. Continuing to go up, we're going to place down an andesite wall on top of those uh, birchwood fence posts. Followed by a stone block here in the center. Going forward from that stone block, we're going to place down another stone block like so. Stone slab to both sides. And we also want to go in again, grab our item frame. We're going to place it down the sides here of these stone slabs, as well as a snowball in the item frame for these spotlights. We're going to go ahead and also grab our item frames here again. And we're going to place down an item frame on the side of this stone block. In that item frame, we're going to place down a black bed. Rotate it sideways. And if you're on Java, we'll grab a birchwood sign. And we're going to use the same technique that we've been doing here with a birchwood sign on the side of that stone block. Then going back from this, we're going to place down another andesite wall here. And then we're going to go then place down a lever like this on top of those two stone top slabs face down to the sides there. Again, for Java players, can you do the item frame trick there like so. Then going up again, we're going to place down another skill or sorry, another smoker on top of the stone block here. Skeleton skull to both sides. Behind the smoker, we're going to place down a stone full block, followed by again a skeleton skull on both sides there. And then on the very back here, we're just going to very simply place down a light gray stained glass pane off the stone block and then to the sides of that glass pane we're going to place down an end rod and then one more end rod that's going to kind of go back and out to the side here at an angle like so with that done on top here we're going to place down a andesite wall on the very top of that stone block followed by a uh, iron bar to both sides and then a skeleton skull on top of that 
um, wall like so. We're also going to go ahead and grab a stone brick slab. We're going to place down a stone brick slab on top here. And we're going to take our birchwood signs and just wrap it around the two sides here. Like that. And that's going to complete our front uh, pagoda mass. Or our main conning tower. After that's all done there, we're going to go and then go to the stone brick wall. We're going to go up at an angle with another stone brick wall like so. We're going to go then place down a block on top of this wall like so. And then a skeleton skull will come off the side of that block. We'll then delete that block and you have this here for your crane. We're going to go ahead and also take our chains. And we're just going to place down two chains connecting from this stone stair to the back of the skeleton skull like so. To go ahead and complete that crane design. After that, we're going to place down another stone block that goes up right here. We're going to follow this up with a iron trap door on top of this uh, stone or, an, or on top of that andesite wall and we're also going to go and grab our item frames place on both sides here of the iron trap door there and then a snowball in those item frames we're going to go and then place down an andesite wall back from the stone block here again a item frame on both sides of that and then we're going to place down a snowball in that and then a birchwood sign on the side here of this wall on the very top here we're going to go and place down a polished blackstone slab here and then we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull on top of this wall. So it's going to basically uh, create your smokestack there and complete that up, or I should say our funnel. With uh, that done, going to the rear here for the mast, we're going to go ahead and first start off by going ahead and grabbing ourselves a dispenser. And we're going to place down a dispenser on top of this and this wall. Going up for that dispenser, we want to go ahead and grab our narrow brick fence post. And we're going to place down two fence posts up, like so. We then want to go ahead and grab a polished blackstone wall. And we're going to place down a polished blackstone wall on top of this narrow brick fence post. We're going to place down two end rods out to the sides. Then uh, we're going to place down an end rod coming off these ones going forward. And then they're going to kind of go out at an angle like this. So like that. And we're going to do the same thing on the back here. So again, kind of like this going uh, out like that. So it should look like that there for your kind of rear mass there. Once we have that done... Uh, we can either go ahead and use a technique here using the debug stick, or you can place down a wither skeleton skull. So I'll show you both here. Um, so if you can either use a wither skeleton skull, come off this wall like so, or we can use a technique here with our debug stick here and a lever. Build a block of space from the wall, place down our lever, and then we're just going to go ahead and left click the lever until we get selected facing. We'll go ahead and right click it so it basically faces and it looks like it connects up to the wall and points upward. So again, those are two options there for you. Anyways, they go, anyways, they're going out from the lever. We're going to place down two um, end rods up like so. We're going to go ahead and then grab our dark oak fence gates. We're going to place down one and two up and one and two. We're going to open the bottom fence gates toward the end rod. And then these top fence gates are going to be opened up out to, away from the end rods. So it's going to look like that there for the back. And that right there is going to basically make your rear mass. At this point in time, what we have left to do now is going to be doing all the rigging here for the um for all the all this um, stuff here so to begin with we're gonna go ahead and go to this end rod here we're gonna go and drop down with our three barrier blocks same thing over here one two three so again uh, we're gonna use barrier blocks the command to get barrier blocks is gonna be slash give at p minecraft colon barrier and yeah, it's just barrier, just like that. And then press enter will give you the bar will give you the barrier block. Um, there are some other blocks that I believe that are they're called different a different name on uh, bed bedrock, but they are available. So you just want kind of an invisible block that you can place stuff on. Basically, after we have those barrier blocks in place here, we're gonna go ahead and place down two um, buttons here. Then we're gonna go ahead and drop down one and two buttons like so. If you're on Java, we'll also go ahead and place down a button here. Um, just note that you can't have a button and item frame in the same block space, so it's going to be only a Java thing uh, to be able to place that button there. But other than that, you can place down the other four buttons like that normally on both versions, and it'll look something like it looks like that. After that's all done, we want to go ahead and grab our barrier blocks, and we're going to go, and go off the glass pane uh, back from the conning tower, a total of seven. So we're going to go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We then want to go ahead and go up to this end rod here we're gonna go ahead and go forward one two three four five six and seven so basically you have your two rows of seven there to begin with we're gonna place down buttons here on both sides of the first four so just like this then we want to place down buttons on the top of the one two three and after we have that finished we're actually gonna go ahead and split out to the sides here so actually 
instead of going down the center here for barrier blocks it's actually going to be going ahead and going from the fence gates so it's going to be seven blocks again but they're actually going to be out to the sides and there's going to be a space here in the middle so my apologies on that one just go ahead and expand them out to the sides there like so so that's what it should look like we're going to go ahead and take our stone buttons we're going to place down one two three across the bottom one two three and then we want to go and then go up to the sides here we're going to place down one two three four and one two three four and now connect up there to our rear mass like so we'll also go ahead and grab our barrier blocks and we're going to go ahead and go up from this uh, sign right here with one and two barrier blocks and on both sides here we're just going to place down three stone buttons going up so just like that our next row is going to go back from this barrier block here so one two we're going to go and then drop down to a row two of our barrier blocks and then we want to go and then drop down to a row of three that's going to connect up to this wall here uh, for our button placement we're going to place down two buttons here on the bottom two buttons on the side here these blocks and to be on both sides for this section here and then we're going to place down a button on the top here and then a second one back like that from it and then we're going to place down a button on both sides of this last one on the sides there so if we can go ahead and uh take our barrier blocks off we'll see a good look here at what our button should look like and something basically like that there so far for our rigging then after that's all done we have our rear uh mast here which is kind of a interesting uh design this is gonna be going ahead and dropping down from these end rods here we're gonna drop down one two three and same thing up here one two three and actually these four ones are gonna be four so it's gonna drop down one more or actually no sorry it's, it is gonna be three on both sides and then over here again one two three and one two three now for these uh rigging system or layout here we're going to go ahead and place down stone buttons around the top block second block and then we're going to place down one button here come off the side of this block same thing here button here then two two then a button here two two button here and then two and two just like that and once you have that all complete there that is going to wrap up your rigging there for the uh, rear mass. And with that, that's going to pretty much wrap up my tutorial here for the IJN Issei, Issei class battleship. Overall, really cool build and came out really good. One quick thing I did notice here on the front before we go ahead and wrap this tutorial up is going to be this end rod that is going to come off of this smoker box. Or, yeah, smoker block going forward. And so with that done, that is now going to complete my tutorial here for the IJN Issei. Hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do use this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This can be linked from a sign of the build, link to my channel, where this video if it does bring social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to for a project you guys are working on. Again, a big special thanks to Patreon support Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. Um, as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Garrett204, and I'll see you guys next time.